University of Miami Miller School of Medicine Department of Neurology has a 51-year-old tradition of research, and particularly research in stroke. Since arriving in 2007, the department has grown tremendously in stroke and now adding translational research in stroke. Epidemiology, imaging, genetics, clinical trials that are new aspects of stroke research that we've added. We are really excited about being one of the new American Stroke Association Viewer Centers of Excellence and starting in 2014 we will join two other centers as a Viewer Center of Excellence. The department now ranks 16 in NIH funding and happy to say that we're one of the 25 NINDS regional coordinating centers in stroke that will be doing some of the latest cutting edge trials for acute stroke, for rehabilitation and for prevention of stroke. Carotid artery disease is a large cause uh, for many strokes in many patients. So um, one of the techniques are neurosynology techniques and ultrasound is really non-invasive, cost-effective way of assessing carotid disease. The unique feature of our neurosynology laboratory is that besides clinical use of ultrasound testing here, we are also doing a lot of research using ultrasound tests as the uh, tool to define the atherosclerotic phenotypes. We would like to understand genetic, environmental factors, and how they interact with each other in order to prevent atherosclerosis and stroke. The focus of interventional neurology is um, both in the treatment of the blockage kind of stroke, where an artery in the uh, brain gets blocked, and also the bleeding kind of stroke where one of the arteries in the brain uh, bleeds. Uh, we are doing research in uh, using new devices to open up blocked arteries in the brain. We are also looking at delivering stem cells uh, from the patient's uh, bone marrow into the carotid artery going to the brain. Uh, the catheter allows us to deliver stem cells on the side of the stroke into the carotid artery uh, and those cells then reach the injured area of the brain, the, the area of the brain with the stroke, in large numbers and, and in a concentrated manner. So using these uh, minimally invasive techniques uh, with catheters from inside blood vessels, we are both treating stroke as well as doing research uh, uh, to advance the treatment of stroke. Research in stroke is an important part of our mission. We seek to find new cures for our patients who have devastating strokes, who need to recover from their deficits and need to prevent new strokes. We have had a long-standing preclinical laboratory which has really identified some of the main uh, processes, the pathologies and ph physiological aspects of cerebral ischemia. When you induce a very mild uh, uh, stroke, uh, what we would call sublethal stroke, and you wait a period of recovery, uh, the brain uh, becomes, becomes highly resistant to a subsequent stroke that is lethal. So what we are doing is trying to find the mechanisms of how that works and try to find some potential drugs that emulate that condition. We know that a number of like, people that have diabetes or smoke or ha have high blood pressure, they're all prone to have a stroke eventually. And uh, what we want to do is get a drug that uh, those patients can take every day and in case they get a stroke, then they will fare much better. There's a significant proportion of stroke patients that are young um, and there are different reasons why younger people have stroke compared to older people in some cases. Uh, but in the end result, uh, the, the brain damage that occurs uh, can cause cognitive problems that needs to be addressed. So we were recently awarded a Buer Foundation Center of Excellence pr uh, Center grant and one of the projects will be to do exercise and cognitive training in stroke patients to see if we can improve their cognitive uh, performance. The exercise study that we proposed uh, that has now been funded by the Buer uh, Foundation and the American Heart Association is going to randomize uh, a group of stroke patients to receive either 
exercise or cognitive training, and we're going to see how the combination of the two uh, results in better outcomes, both cognitive outcomes and quality of life outcomes in stroke patients. So we hope in the future, between genetics, between imaging, between clinical trials that are looking at novel approaches to uh, improve recovery after stroke, that we can join many of the other centers that are out there in improving the outcome for many of our patients with stroke.